Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations, my friends. I'm your host, Linda Joy, Mindset Mojo Mentor, Intentional Living Guide, and publisher of Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational magazine for women since 2006. I don't know about you, but I have always loved working with energy and feng shui and have learned so much about how clutter affects our lives. Did you know that clutter could be blocking your path to abundance? Did you know that your home and every object within it reflects and reinforces your inner landscape? Today, we're going to be exploring the connection between mindset, emotions, and your physical environment so you can take steps to create spaces supportive of the life we desire to live. Joining me today is a old friend, a soul sister, a frequent contributor to Aspire Magazine, Felicia Messina de Haiti. Felicia is a feng shui and soul coach teacher, speaker, award-winning educator, and contributing author of several best-selling books, which I'm honored to be the publisher of. As Denise Lin, the award-winning author of Sacred Space, shares. Felicia is a remarkable teacher and practitioner. She knows how to get to the core of an issue quickly and easily. Her ability to implement transformations in lives of others is truly inspiring. I'm continually in awe of the abilities of this compassionate woman. You know, Felicia has numerous certifications in coaching, Reiki, feng shui, clutter clearing, dream work, oracle cards, and other related areas. She has served as a master mentor for Denise Lynn's Elemental Space Clearing Certification course, as well as her Ultimate Clutter Clearing Coach Certification course. I am so excited to have you here for this sacred conversation, Felicia. Thank you, Linda. I'm excited to be here with you today. Well, we've known each other a long time, and I've, you know, you've been writing for Aspire off and on for a number of years. And I've learned so much from your writing and just knowing you personally. And you know, this is like a, a topic that I always get so like juiced up about because for years I didn't know I was so unconscious about that, that the truth that everything is energy, right? And the more mm -hmm. I almost said shit, well, I will say it, the more shit we have in our house weighing us down is really a reflection of what's going on within and vice versa. So Let's talk about that. What is the relationship between us and our home and physical environment? So everything, because we are, you know, we are energy and everything in our world is made of energy. We interact with this energy and we're constantly um, in relationship with the things in our environment. And so when we set up our homes, when we choose the pictures, the artwork, the colors, it's all an energetic reflection of our mindset and our emotions and really um, beliefs that we may not even be conscious of at the time. If you think about your home as a three-dimensional vision board, you're constantly like creating and reinforcing what is represented in your mind and your emotions. I love that, a 3D vision board. And so as we, let's say we walk into a room, I'm very visual, so I'm hit that way. Does everyone process the energy differently? Yes. So everyone processes and interacts with their environment in a different way. And oftentimes people may not even be aware of the impact that their environment has on them. 
But if you ever um, were in a circumstance where you walked into a room after an argument and can still feel the heaviness in the space, or if you've ever walked into a room that was preparing, you know, where you were preparing for a party or a celebration, the energy there would be di very different and would have a different impact on your body and your own energy. I, I can I can relate to that because I'm very sensitive to that. And um, one of my elderly relatives, as many of them um, do, had a lot of, you know, some just like they collect everything. Mm -hmm. And so they'll, her living room is just, there is stuff everywhere. And I don't mean the clutter like all over the floors. I mean, she just has like 50 photos on the walls, every kind of knickknack. And when I walk in there, I actually feel constricted. But for years, that when I was a child, because it's the same way as when I was a child, right? When I walked in, I never used to understand why I felt what I felt because I wasn't aware. And then as I became aware, I was like, whoa. It made me more conscious of what I wanted to feel in my own home. Have you heard stories like that? Like once you get that the energy of your home is affecting you, you become more conscious of keeping it maintained. Yes, definitely. Um, especially like when we are living in an environment and we're in there every day, everything kind of blends into the background and we might not realize the impact that things have on us or if we're growing up in a home we might not be as cognizant of, you know, the, the impact the energy has. But if you go, you know, you walk into a home where you're not usually there, you can feel it more deeply. And then it can make you more aware when you go back to your own home, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> well, one of the things I noticed for myself too, Felicia, is like now, not, not years ago, but now sometimes I get this nudges, clear out and see what you can get rid of in that cabinet and i'm like why are you feeling the nudge to do that but once i get started it's like i i find papers that i don't need anymore it's almost like our inner wisdom knows when something is meant to be cleared so now i follow the nudge as illogical as the timing may be do you feel that way sometimes too I do. I do. I often get urges like, hmm, you haven't gone to this area or you haven't cleared up. You need to go here and clear something out. And usually it's, I find that it's related to the need for just a shift in energy in my life at the time. Um, so if I'm working on a project, if I am trying to start something new, and I feel that urge, I definitely go ahead and clear out the stuff because that means I'm making space for something new to come into my life. I love that. And, you know, I've known you a long time, read all your articles, and that's one tip um, that I've used over and over again from you is when you want to call something in, make space for it. Right? Yeah. You have to have energetic space, but also physical space, correct? Correct, definitely. Um, whenever we set, so energy will always like fill a vacuum. And whenever you have a new intention or something new that you wanna bring in, you have to think about, is there physical and energetic space for me to welcome this into my life? And if there isn't the energy, you know, the universe is just gonna say, oh, well, there's no room, so I'll just move on, <laughs> or it's not time yet. It, and I love that. One of the things I noticed, like say there's a room in your house. Well, no, let me rephrase this. Is there a certain area of the house of when you want to call in abundance that we should work on? Like I understand the Bagua, but for those who have never heard of it, what area of the house would that be if we were talking about abundance? Mm -hmm. So if we're um, looking at the abundance area of the home, so based on the Bagua, which is an energy map, when you're facing, when you're standing in your front door facing into your home, it would be the back left corner of your house or the back left corner of a room if you're working on a smaller space. Okay, so 
one of the questions I have is about the front door, because I don't know about you, like I have a front door, which I will call the architectural front door, but I always use the back porch door because it's closest to the driveway. So I know that's come up a few times um, in conversation with friends, like, and they laid it out based on the door they're always using, but that's not correct, right? Do we go by the architectural door? Yes. I always recommend going by the architectural front door of the home. So even if you don't use the front door, <laughs> it is still considered the mouth of chi or it's where the energy is welcomed into and brought into your home. Um, and even if you don't use that door regularly, I would recommend placing the bagua based on the architectural front door. And even you know, with your front door, making sure that you do use it, <laughs> um, at least e even if it's just to open the door and welcome in new energy into, into your home every day. It's funny because years ago, I think you were either in one of my summits or all this radio show or, or an article, you shared so much wisdom with my brands. You shared something, and I can't remember if it was a, about a specific time of year or a moon, but you said, open the door and say, welcome abundance, welcome radiant health. And when I do that, I look across at my own my old home where um, five nuns bought our house. And one day, not thinking, I'm like, open the door and I'm like, welcome in abundance. So, and, and I look up and they're all standing there like, what is she doing? <laughs> um, which brought that thankfully they know my me so well but i remember looking up and they're like there is nobody there why does she keep opening the door because i'd open it with every statement that's powerful though right it's like oh using that door to, to welcome in the chi yes definitely you're welcoming in new energy you're keeping the energy moving in your house and that's, it's very important not to have um, stagnant energy in your home because that's another form of clutter. Well, it's funny because I can feel it too. Like I will intuitively know, I'll give you an example. Last year, as you know, I ended up in the hospital. So for about a month, I couldn't make it up the stairs to my office, right? Mm -hmm. So when I finally was recovered and I came upstairs in my office, the door had been closed. I hadn't been in there. I felt it immediately, Felicia. I'm like, oh no, there's some stagnant stuff going on in here. So I took my little steel hand drum. I have a spray too. Um, I opened all the windows, and, but I went and I felt like intuitive, like I had to do this. So I went to every corner and I have a little goddess nook and went in there because I didn't want any stagnant energy hiding in my little nook. And it was that intuitive of a knowing. So that's what you're talking about. We have to move the energy in every area of our house, even closets, right? Because it can get stuck in there. Yes, definitely. Uh, and, you know, go ahead. Oh, if there's a room that you know you won't be using for a while or that's just not used in general, you could do simple things like turning on a fan or play, even playing music in the room will keep the energy moving in there. It's funny that you said that because um, we have a, um, a spare bedroom for when the little goddess comes over or anyone else and it's across from my office but it doesn't get used every day but a couple months ago I was just led to leave a sound machine in there and it's the ocean surf mm. and to me that's moving the energy yes definitely and, and I actually have the same sound in my um, in our master bedroom because I just love keeping the energy going we're going to take a quick break and when we be, we'll, yeah, we'll be back in a moment. I'm with Felicia Messina de Haiti. You can learn more at FeliciaDeHaiti.com. We'll be right back, my friends. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspire Conversations. With me today is Felicia Messina de Haiti, a feng shui and soul coach. And we're talking today about energy, clutter, and our favorite topic, abundance. So you shared so much about 
the energy in our home. How does clutter affect abundance? Clutter clogs our energy, clogs our pathways. And it's a way of, it, it also sends a message out to the universe that, hey, I have plenty of stuff here. I don't need anything else. <laughs> so it kind of blocks and restricts our um, ability to welcome in new things, new opportunities, new money, um, anything new. It, it restricts and prevents it um, from coming into our life more easily. I think that's beautiful. I remember um, when I was younger, you know, I was a welfare mom, so I had some of those beliefs that, well, I have to save this just in case. You know, it comes from the programming from childhood. And now I'm like, no, no, that's taken up space in my energy field and in my life. And so now I'm very intentional, probably for the last five years, very intentional with everything that I purchase. Um, as well as everything that I place in my home, right? And it has made a world of difference in like, in how I feel in my own home, but also like in the things we purchase that we sometimes do just out of, um, out of habit. Have you know, and for myself, I notice there's such a freedom in that. Yes, definitely. It's, um, once we become more intentional about I mean, if you think about every object in your house as being either a guest or a resident, <laughs> um, think about who do you want or what do you want to invite into your home to share your space and share your energy. So over the years, I know I've become very um, more aware of what I do buy and what I do bring into the home. And sometimes it, you know, it involves a shift of releasing something else to bring in um, the new object or the new um, item. Yeah, well, about three years ago, right before we built our intentional home that I'm in now, we were purging what we used to call the big house. And as I remember going through this five drawer filing cabinet, Felicia, and finding papers that I had for like 15 years, like what the? was I saving the stuff off boxes that I of what I would say was memorabilia and stuff that I hadn't even opened in the 18 years I had been in that house and I remember saying all that stuff was stored which is energy right mm -hmm. and I realized there cannot be any emotional connection to this stuff if I never opened the the boxes in 18 years and I did, a, I had to do a ritual to release them, right? Some stuff, of course, got shredded, but some stuff was, thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for what you added. It's time to release you. And I, I would donate it and, and envision blessing someone else, like that someone else would find it and love it. But that was a big eye opener for me after 20 years in that home to say, how much stuff are we storing that we're not even looking at? And we don't realize what it's costing us energetically. Yes, definitely. Um, and that's actually a strategy for clutter clearing <laughs> um, is if you have things that you're not quite sure whether or not you want to keep, you can put them in a box, seal them up and kind of put an expiration date on it. And if you haven't even thought about what's in the box, by the time, you know, the expiration date comes around, just get rid of it. Um, a lot of times we have, you know, we keep things because in the moment they were significant for us, but, you know, we, we're changing every day, every day with new experiences, we develop new beliefs, we transform. And so what may have been significant for you, you know, some years ago doesn't have the same meaning now, but it could be possibly gifted to somebody else and have meaning in their lives. Yeah, and it brought me so much joy actually to donate it, but also it made me feel, when I purged everything, you know, the stuff that I tossed, not donated, it felt like a thousand pounds came off me, mm -hmm. right? It was over a period of three months um, that we were, you know, clearing the house. And I was like, oh my God, what am I creating space for? Now, here's what I found funny is my business, so that was like three years ago, give or take a couple months, 
Um, when I did that, a vision for another aspect of my business dropped in during that time. And I remember going, this is all related. There was no room for it to come before. So do you find that that people that when they, after they do a major clutter clearing, it could be a new relationship comes in abundance or maybe a business idea. Uh, do you have a lot of feedback from your clients on that? I do actually. And it's, you know, it, it seems like magic. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't realize that once they kind of release these things from their lives, it just, it, it just like magically opens up. I don't want to say like a portal <laughs> or um, new waves of energy to come in with new ideas, new clients. Sometimes I've had clients who once they clear out all of their like finance, old financial files and files they don't need anymore, they all of a sudden start getting more client calls. Yes. And, and you know, there's a flip side to that too, is when I clear out old stuff like you just said i also love to if, uh, this is for business owners <clears throat> i also love to get some brand new file folders so i clear out the old to make space then i get file folders and say i want to call in five new clients in that quarter i create the folders and stand them up new client number one number two it's like i'm holding space for them to come but before i could hold space for them i had to clear the space Yes, definitely. And it's also very helpful to, so if you, like, if you already know that you want five more clients, you could clutter clear with that intention. So I am clutter clearing this file drawer in order to welcome in five new clients. And so Ooh, I like that. Yeah. When you clutter clear intentionally like that, when you already know what you want to bring in, or at least the feeling of what you want to bring in, it, um, helps the energy to like bring in the energy that you desire as you are releasing the old energy. Now I'm all about that because I love using affirmations like um, like when I'm doing mandala coloring books, instead of just coloring, I focus on affirmation as I'm doing the mandalas. It's like setting my intention to the divine, right? Mm -hmm. um, something else too is I remember I think it was one of your articles, maybe it was a conversation. This is going back many years. It was about relationships. Like, and if say someone's single, but their other side of the bed and the nightstand is all cluttered and there's no room in the closet, um, how, can, how can they call someone in when there's no energetic space for them? Exactly. <laughs> That's very important um, that you must make physical, emotional, and energetic space for welcoming in new relationships yeah I, I remember reading something about that and i was like it makes sense though doesn't it like once you know about energy this is why i love the work you do because you're always educating um, us in how to work with energy once you understand it it's kind of fun. it's i don't want to say kind of it's fun to work with it it is it definitely is yeah i have a ball um and i just follow my like two weeks ago, I have no idea why, because we've only been in the house two years. I decided to go through all the big cabinets and you know, Dana walks in like, what the heck are you doing? And I'm like, I just felt it, I had to do it. And I felt so good after, guess what? A couple of days later, an opportunity came. Now I wasn't thinking about calling in an opportunity, but I believe that when sometimes when we just move energy on its own and follow our intuition, that the divine says, ah, thank you for making space so I can deliver th that which was meant for you. Yes, that definitely makes sense. Yeah, it feels good to me. We're going to take another break. When we come back in a moment, I want to talk about, you know, what the most important aspect of clutter clearing is that will create lasting change. So I'll be back in a moment. I am with Felicia Messina DeHaiti of FeliciaDeHaiti.com. Be sure to swing by our website check out her sacred free offering, as well as all the other amazing programs she has for you. We'll be right back. Are you feeling called to clear your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual blockages? That's your soul and environment speaking to you and asking you to uncover all the clutter that is preventing you from living the life you envision. Felicia Messina DeHaiti 
soul coaching master practitioner and trainer, and teacher of advanced interior alignment and medicine wheel feng shui, supports her international clientele by creating inner and outer transformation in their environments and their lives by combining elements from her extensive training, experience, and intuition. Felicia is a master intuitive coach certified by Colette Baron reed and has served as a master mentor for Denise Lynn's Elemental Space Clearing Certification Course, as well as her Ultimate Clutter Clearing. Explore her offerings, including certification courses in Feng Shui, Space Clearing, Soul Coaching, and Reiki at FeliciaDeHady.com. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Welcome back, my friends. So right before the break, we were talking about um, the relationship between clutter and abundance. So I'm curious, Felicia, what do you feel is the most important aspect of clutter clearing that will create lasting change for our listeners? I believe the most important aspect and the, the step one of everything is to start with an intention. So looking at what do you what do you desire to experience in your home and how do you want it to support you? So if abundance is what you desire, then you would look at the things in your environment and ask yourself the question, does this object represent abundance to me? And does it make me feel abundant? So if you have a lot of, let's say you have a lamp in a room or in your office that is broken and you haven't fixed it for, I don't know, five years <laughs> and, it's, and, it, and it's still sitting there. Like when you look at it, does that make you feel abundant or does it give you like it, the thoughts of, oh, I can't ever, I said I was gonna fix it and I haven't fixed it. I don't ever finish what I start. Um, or I don't say, you know, I don't follow through with what I say I'm gonna do. Um, does it give you thoughts like that? Or does it make you like, does it make you feel abundant? Like I wouldn't think so. So that would be a situation where either, okay, you either fix it or get rid of it and replace it with something that does make you feel abundant. It's so funny that you brought that up because for me, there was something that I always loved, but it had a crack in it. And I, every time I looked at it, I still loved it. But then the question came to me, Linda, you are worthy of having one that is not cracked. It became a worth thing too, right? Mm -hmm. Like the lamp, the broken lamp. Why would you want to hold on to something? You are worthy of having a lamp that works. So do you notice some of the stuff that, that this work brings up is we look at our own self-worth issues? Yes. And it could bring up a lot of issues. Um, Self-worth is one of them. It could also, are, do you trust that the universe will provide for you? Um, do you trust that you are safe? So it could bring up um, issues of self-worth, of trust. It could also, you'd be surprised when people delve into like the reasons for keeping different kinds of clutter, it could, you know, some of it is tied to family history or your relationship with your parents or your grandparents and habits that you have that you're not even aware of. So when we get to the, when we start looking at the root of, you know, why we keep certain types of clutter, a lot of um, emotional mindset things could also come up to be released. Well, that was a big one when we were helping um, our elderly neighbor a few years ago. And there were certain things they were preparing for, you know, what may come with his help. And they had asked for my help because I was really close to him. And there was, th and, don't, and don't forget, he was from the generation back then, he was in his 80s. So he was from the generation of, of, you know, lack and struggle, even though he was wealthy now. And he would say the funniest things. I'd go, um, why do you need six of these? He goes, well, you never know if one's going to break. But, he, but he's 85 years old, right? Mm -hmm. he, he couldn't let things go because he had that mindset of, it, I think if it goes back to what you just said about not believing the universe will support him if he gave up five and kept one, 
right? It's like holding mm -hmm. on so tightly to what is because really you don't trust the universe or trust divine or whatever your source is. Did you find a lot of people hold on for that reason? I do. And sometimes it's, you know, they don't believe that they don't trust that they're going to continue to be able to get what they need when they need it. Um, sometimes it could just be an unconscious habit. So if you like grew up, if you or your parents grew up during the depression or some other time where you had to keep the extras because you weren't going to get any, <laughs> anything else, um, it's just like an unconscious habit of, oh, I have to have, you know, extra of the extras. And one interesting phenomena <laughs> that we find in clutter clearing is that if there's something that you're really attached to and you know it could be you know a kitchen spoon a special spoon or, or anything a blender or something like i can't get rid of this um because i won't be able to get another one and then you finally get rid of it chances are within a very short period of time, you are going to find yourself in a circumstance where you think you need that object. You're like, oh no, I knew I shouldn't have given that away because now I need it. <laughs> um, and, that, and that tends to happen a lot. I think it's that um, you're reinforcing your own fears when that comes up, but I think it also allows us to be more creative in finding solutions like, okay, well, I don't have it. So what am I going to do? What are my other options? They should think outside the box. Yes. So I've seen you share that clutter clearing is more, is about more than just removing physical clutter. So explain that to the listeners who may be new to this whole conversation. So there's also, there, there are different aspects of clutter um, in our lives. And it, most of the time it's physical, we can see it in the physical, but it can also, we can also have mental clutter. So if you have, let's say a to-do list that just continues on for pages and pages and you don't ever seem to get anything done, but you're always adding more stuff to the list, um, that would be an example of mental clutter. Like you have all these things that you say you wanna do, but you're not getting them done. So either they're not, that important <laughs> or your priorities have shifted or maybe you could delegate it to somebody else but it's cluttering up your mental space it's also um if we think about time clutter like many of us especially women are overcommitted <laughs> and our schedules are full and some of us have difficulty saying no so if our schedules are always full, how can we welcome in new opportunities that will help us to grow and support us? Um, another example could be if you have a lot of unfinished projects around your house, like even if you, you know, shove it under the bed, put it in the closet where you can't see the clutter, emotionally and mentally subconsciously even you still know those things are there and you started it and you didn't finish it so that also weighs on us as another form of like energetic clutter um that keeps that you know holds us back from what we really want to do mm, that really speaks to me when i was young that was me the energetic clutter of unfinished projects, artworks, um, what are those, needlepoint, everything. My mother would always say, you never finish anything. And I realized after I hit a certain age how much it was weighing me down. I didn't understand about energy or all these concepts. It was just this knowing of either pass them on to someone else or let them go because I could feel the weight, right? Mm -hmm. I, well, I could feel the self-judgment that was the self judgment was weighing me down. Yeah, that's a big self judgment is a big um, clutter culprit. <laughs> um, especially when you know, and when we are clutter clearing, as much as possible, do it without 
judgment. Um, because, you know, we, we have these things, we acquire them for a reason, but, you know, now we're, you know, if you're at this time when you are clutter clearing, you might not need it anymore. And a lot of times people feel guilty because maybe, oh, you spent a lot of money on this. How can you just give it away? Or somebody in your family gave it to you. You know, you're thinking about their feelings when, you know, oh, they might come over and find that it's not there anymore or that you gave it away and they'll be hurt. So there's a lot of, like a lot of things can come up with when you're clutter clearing, but one of the biggest ones is self-judgment. Yeah, it was a big one. I know it was a big one for me. And the other thing is, I'm so glad that you covered um, the physical, the mental, and the energetic because um, we are multidimensional, right? It isn't just what we can see. It's also what we feel and what's weighing us down. So I think I love that you covered that because it gives everyone such insights. Um, what kind of resistance, uh -huh, what kind of resistance might we come up for us during clutter clearing and how can we work through or release that resistance? Mm. So one of the one of the biggest ones we talked about already, which is, you know, I can't give this away because I'm gonna need it. <laughs> oh yes. Um there, the resistance can show up in a lot of different ways through procrastination. <laughs> Um, not wanting to give away certain things because, so if you have a collection of, let's say, um, certificates or trophies from when you grew up, you could be attached to them because they represent the achievements that you have. Now, giving away the trophy isn't going to change that you didn't achieve that goal or, you know, win the race or finish that course having the thing reminds you of it but it's not but taking that away doesn't take away from who you are so i think a lot of times people need reminders or they hold on to the reminders of what they've done in the past and it kind of keeps you focused more on the past than what do I have to look forward to in the future? And so with things like that, we could, you know, some people take pictures of the objects before they give them away. Um, sometimes just like mapping out and creating goals and intentions for the future can help to release some of those things of the past that don't have as much meaning, don't really have as much meaning but we're still holding on to them um, because it's built into our identity and that it scares people to get rid of things that kind of represent them. Yeah, I can remember when we moved out of the big house, I had the plaque from when I won a SBA's Entrepreneur of the Year, I think back in 2000. So it was 2019 when we were purging the house. And I remember looking at it going, there is no emotional need for me to keep this plaque. But for years, I believed I had to keep it because like you just so beautifully described, in releasing it, it was almost like nothing can take it away just because I tossed the plaque. Does that make sense? So is that what you're, you're talking yeah. about that? Just because I tossed it, I had that experience. That experience is part of who I am. I don't need that physical item, in my case, to to keep me anchored to that time period. That's what it felt like to me anyway. Yeah, like it, definitely. Yeah, it was like, um, I, it was had become an anchor. And when I let it go, it was done with love and gratitude for the experience, but I didn't need it to prove an experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Felicia, we're gonna take our final break. We come back, we can talk more about resistance and then we can close out in the last segment about some simple steps we can take in our homes to welcome in more abundance. So I will be back in a moment with Felicia Messina de Haiti. You can learn more at FeliciaDeHaiti.com. We'll be right back, my friends. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. So happy that you're here with us today. I am with Felicia Messina de Haiti. We're talking about feng shui, abundance, clutter clearing, and energy. So what are some of the other ways that resistance might come up for us? 
So it could come up in different fears that if we don't have, a lot of times it is in, um, what if I need this someday? So if you, you know, if you graduated from college and with an accounting degree and you still have all your accounting books, but now, you know, let's say you're a yoga teacher, like, do you really need <laughs> all those accounting books? <laughs> Um, so sometimes it's fear that, um, you'll lose your identity or that you won't be the same. Sometimes it could be fear of, do I really want to step into this new life or, or feeling like you need an anchor to kind of keep you like, okay, this is who I am. I'm, I don't want to change too much, but even though I'm saying I want something different because we like, you know, as humans, we like consistency. <laughs> um, sometimes we can feel resistance comes up as guilt, especially if you've been the keeper of the family heirlooms that, you know, you feel like it's your responsibility to keep all these things, even though you don't have space for them you don't, you don't have physical space for them and you don't, they really have no meaning for you beyond them having meaning for somebody else. That's a big one. That's a big one. Cause my mom's 84 in the last three, four years, she started clearing out and guess what she was. She was a photo person. She mm. is that keeper all the way back to generations she has photos from when she was a child from all her brothers and sisters. She became the, the photo holder. So then suddenly she says, you kids come and get what you want. We're like, we don't want any of that. Like, <laughs> what do we want something that's 80 years old? Like, there's no meaning for us. She had to go through and I had to help her go through a lot of healing of that it's okay to release them. Right? Because she was the keeper of the memories. And I mm -hmm. had to go through my own while she was doing that of, do I need all these pictures for my childhood? I'm talking about, Felicia, every photo you could possibly think of. Mm -hmm. Every, every, me and my brothers and sisters, she had thousands for each of us. And I'm like, I didn't need that. I grabbed about 22 key memories. And those are the photos I wanted. I didn't want all the rest. For what reason, right? Um, that was my personal thing. I know some people really love the photos. I didn't need them. But I had to go through a whole process of, is it okay not to want them when, when they're so important to her? So there were some big um, ahas there for me too. So we know that everyone loves to know how they can bring in more abundance. So what are some simple steps that we can take in our homes to welcome more abundance into our lives? So in, so I always say the first step <laughs> is the clutter clearing. Um, but beyond that, making sure that in our home, we, so in the, we talked about the abundance corner being the back left corner of a room. So yeah. you can, so you can set up like a wealth corner or what, like a wealth station <laughs> in your room or wealth altar, whatever you um, would like to call it where you you might have either a some people have little water fountains in that space little indoor water fountains to keep to represent um money flowing abundance flowing you may use um like an altar cloth in that area maybe a purple which represents abundance or maybe some citrine stones or you could just look at your spaces and make sure you put in images or artwork that to you represent abundance. So you wanna think about things that like plants that have upward growth. Um, so if you think about your abundance growing, um, make sure that you're you know, going back to the front door making sure that the front door is free of clutter, that the door works properly, that it opens fully so that you can welcome in all that abundant energy into your home. And 
another area to focus on is your stove, um, which is a symbol of abundance. The stove, the flames on the stove top. So making sure that you keep the stove in good working condition, that the burners are all clean and that you like alternate which burners you use. You're not always focused on using just one burner because you want to keep that, you know, abundance energy like fired up. <laughs> oh, I love this. I'm, I'm taking notes as you're speaking. <laughs> so the, for the plants, do you have any specific plants as someone that doesn't know a lot about plants? Uh, like a mother-in-law's tongue, you're talking about ones that grow straight up, right? More than the ones that hang. So we're looking for plants that, yeah. that rise up. Yes. And also there is a, like a feng shui money plant. I'm not, I'm not a huge plant person either. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm known as the plant killer. It's the family joke. I can grow pothos. I got it all over my office. Mm -hmm. but anything else my family says, run plant, run, don't let her buy you. Um, yeah. Um, and there is, so if you are not a plant person, mm -hmm. so a lot of times in feng shui, I see, um, I've read where you should not have fake plants, <laughs> but I believe that if you have a fake plant that is nicely dusted and looks abundant or feels abundant, then that's much better than having a half dead struggling plant. <laughs> yeah, because that means your abundance is um, struggling. Years ago in my other office at the other house, um, because I kill plants, I'm better <laughs> now, but back then especially, I did get a beautiful, um, realistic looking plant. But because I was nervous about the feng shui, I actually put real dirt in it, nobody could mm -hmm. tell. And then I put a citrine in it, in the amethyst. Because I was like, I, I want to elevate that it's fake. But at the same time, exactly what you said, walking into my office and seeing a dead spider plant wasn't <laughs> going to make me feel abundance, especially knowing that it was in my abundance corner. I finally said no. So um, I want to add some more stuff um, in my area. Like I, my office is completely feng shui. Um, in the, so in the abundance corner, all of that. But... Um, I want to finish the lower level, like the living um, level and walk through one more time. But it's for me, it's consistent. I'm always checking every area, not just every room. I check the abundance section of each room and then the main, the main left corner. So you shared so many amazing tips with um, our audience today, Felicia. Is there any, um, we have about two minutes left. Is there any additional piece of wisdom or insight that you'd like to leave our listeners with? Mm. Just that it always starts with an intention. So even if, you know, you don't get the, you know, the feng shui right, <laughs> according to, you know, a book, as long as you hold the intention of what you want to bring into your life and you take action based on that intention, it will draw to you that which you desire. Mm, I love that. You shared so much uh, wisdom here, I, but I want to invite everyone, please visit Felicia at FeliciaDeHady.com. You'll receive a complimentary gift. You'll get to explore all her offerings, including her certification courses in, in, in the topics of interior alignment, feng shui, space clearing, soul coaching, and more. So thank you, Felicia, for joining me today. Always a pleasure to have you on the show and co-create with you. Thank you, Linda. Blessings, everyone. Until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.